Price is at the heart of all investing. Every investment has its right price. But what about the funds we invest in? How are they priced? There's a lot of focus on fund charges at the moment. In this video, I'll explain the basics of fund pricing, which is part of that bigger picture around costs, and why so-called dilution adjustments and charges are sometimes necessary. What I'm saying only relates to authorised unit trusts and open-ended investment companies, the funds most commonly used by private investors. Exchange-traded funds and investment trusts follow different rules. Essentially, the fund prices you see on websites and in newspapers are what you expect. The basic principle is a fund's daily price should reflect the value of the assets it holds on behalf of investors, minus the costs of running the fund. Pricing is the responsibility of the fund management group, overseen by an independent depository or trustee whose job is to ensure investors are fairly treated. Most of the time, that's as much as you need to know. Occasionally, things get more complicated. This is because there are two things affecting a fund price. Obviously, one is the changing value of the investments held by the fund as they trade on the stock market. However, the other is the volume and direction of investments in the fund itself. You see, the number of investors buying and selling a fund also affects its price. In normal times, if there's an even balance of buyers and sellers, this isn't a problem. But if there is a surge of either buyers or sellers, the cost of creating or cancelling shares and units in a fund can mount. If a fund manager isn't careful, some investors can end up getting a better price than other investors. In the past, this was less of a problem. Traditionally, the trading of shares and other investments in the City of London has been done with dual pricing. Under dual pricing, there are two prices. One is the price you buy at, and the other is the price at which you sell. The buy price is always higher than the sell price. The gap between them, known as the spread, allows the investment company to cover its dealing costs and in the case of stockbrokers, make a profit as well. If everyone used the terms buy and sell, there'd be a lot less confusion. Unfortunately, the old-fashioned terms of bid and offer are widely used. The best way to think of bid and offer is that they describe the actions of the company you're buying from and selling to. When you want to buy, the broker or investment company will offer you a price. Buy and offer are the same thing. When you want to sell, the broker will bid for your business with what he or she thinks is a keen price. Sell and bid are the same thing. Older unit trusts use these offer and bid prices just like shares do. Once you understand the terms, dual pricing is straightforward. It also allows the fund manager to allocate trading costs to investors through the spread or gap between the buy and sell prices. A word of caution is needed on spreads, however. Spreads can vary a lot. Funds investing in big FTSE 100 stocks that are easy to trade will usually have narrow spreads of about 1%. However, those investing in smaller or thinly traded markets will have much wider spreads of 6 or even 8%. Wide spreads make it much more expensive to trade in and out of a fund over a few days or weeks, as your costs may eat up all your gains. You need to think longer term. Most funds nowadays don't use dual pricing. They've opted for a single buy and sell price. In one way, it's simpler. But the drawback is what happens when there's a spike of investors buying or selling a fund. A dual priced fund can give the right price whatever investors are doing. A single priced fund faced with a wave of selling risks giving too high a price to the people withdrawing their money. This is because the single price won't reflect the cost of selling their shares and units. If too much is paid to the departing investors, it leaves less for the investors who remain behind. In city jargon, the investors left behind are diluted. Their shares and units are worth a bit less. Fund managers respond to this problem by reverting to dual pricing. Behind the single price they quote are the old buy and sell, offer and bid prices. So, in periods where there are more sellers than buyers, they will swing the single price towards the old bid or sell price. When there are more buyers and sellers, it will swing the single price the other way, towards the old offer or buy price. The alternative to the swinging single price is for fund managers to keep the single price where it is 
but levy an explicit dilution charge on investors as they transact in or out. No one likes paying more than they need to, but in this case, the dilution levies and adjustments are an attempt to play fair by everybody.